Okay, welcome to Lowe's Yoga. Today is going to be a pretty mindful Hatha class. It will be slow, but there will be points that will challenge you. We're going to hold dolphin pose for a while once we warm up, which is going to be to strengthen through the upper back muscles and get the shoulders rotated back. There's going to be a lot of emphasis on opening up through the shoulders to strengthen the traps so that we gain that elasticity um, and tension, I should say, in the spine so that our shoulders stay back in a day-to-day -day living of life. Uh, we're going to get some core action at the very beginning and then sprinkled in here and there through the class so that we can make contact with the diaphragm um, and go from there. So if you are ready to go and don't have a block, um, grab one. If you don't have a block at all, you can grab anything that's similar to a block. Um, talking to my friend, she grabbed a shoebox, and that will be plenty for <laughs> this class um, till the very end. And then you can do it next time you get a block. So let's go ahead and meet, lay down, and I'd like your knees bent. You can set the block off to the side for now. And I'd like you to have your feet pretty wide so that your knees can just rest onto each other. We're going to spend a few minutes here. So take your time, get comfortable. Get comfortable, play with your clothing, get the fidgets out of the way, your hair if it's in a bun like mine, I make sure to do it nice and high so it wouldn't bother me. And then I'd like you to place your hands right on top of your abdomen, your lower abdomen, where you think your diaphragm is, okay? So the really cool thing about yoga is that you can really get so much done during your practice, not only for your strengthening of your full body, but also for the gliding or some people call flossing of your fascia, your tissues, your muscles, the tissues that, that help the muscles stay in place. And um, by doing so, right, you get more mobility, you get more efficiency in movement, more efficiency in immunity as well. The other part is that it also helps psychologically, right, with the pranayama breath. So that's what we're going to be in right now. So I'd like you to just take a big inhale through your nose, a nice big exhale through your mouth, and then keep repeating that. And then just begin to notice where the skin makes contact on the fingers. And then I'd like you to just kind of tune in as you're breathing like this. You can kind of slow down the amount of air you're taking in, if it'll help you to relax. But I'd like you to tune in to how you're feeling today in your mood, your energy. Are there parts of you that feel weak today or tired? Are there parts of you that feel agitated? or fidgety. Just take a second just to notice, and you might fade in and out of my voice as you really start to dive into yourself right now. And that's okay. And then once you've kind of tuned into yourself, I'd like you to go back to the physical sensation of the stomach going up as you inhale. And the stomach going down as you exhale. And I'd like you to imagine now, right underneath this skin, the fascia. And then beneath the fascia, the layers of the tissues. I'd like you to imagine your diaphragm, kind of where your hands are right now. The diaphragm acts as a sheet between the upper ribs and the lower abdominal wall. And as you inhale, the diaphragm contracts or moves down and gets smaller. And then as you exhale, it enables it to lift up again and enlarge. So imagine you can see that right below the surface. As you inhale, the diaphragm contracts or moves down. And then as you release it, it does the reverse. Can you see that? Can you imagine it? Some people call it, it's like a hot air balloon. A parachute. But it's a muscle. And its main purpose is to breathe. 
There's also a nerve that goes straight from the brain to the diaphragm. And I believe it connects in the cervical spine at C3 and C4. That communicates information back and forth. So yet again, here comes that brain gut connection. And also aids aid in digestion, it opens and allows the esophagus to have a lot of food to come down as we eat. It also is what spasms our diaphragm when we get the hiccups. It's all sorts of stuff with this diaphragm muscle. Now I'd like you to inhale and hold your breath at the top of the, the inhale. And then exhale. And then repeat that two more times. Inhale, hold the breath at your top of it, which is going to be a little energizing to get us into the practice. And then exhaling. And then one more. And release. Good. Okay, now I'd like you to bring your feet hip distance apart instead of wide and bring the knees hip distance apart. Keep your hands on your abdomen here. And I want you to contract the navel a little bit. So kind of hug the ribs together, not so much force that you feel like you're about to do some hard core here, but just enough to know it's awake. And then I'd like you to lift the knees up, not fully to the chest, but just enough so that they're lifted slightly higher than maybe your hip bones. Good, and then with the right knee, I'd like you to bring it slightly forward towards the back, I guess, or the front of your mat and make tiny little circles while you're contracting the abdomen, just to feel maybe how easy it is for you to control your pelvic floor right now or how challenging it is. And then imagining holding all of this containment as our movements become a little bit more invigorated. Go both ways if you'd like with the knee. And then I'd like you to go back into center with the knee and I start the other knee. So as the left knee comes slightly forward, the right knee comes in, contract the core and make tiny little circles with that left knee, just to feel how you can engage the pelvic floor muscles, how you can engage as you inhale and exhale the diaphragm muscle. All of this soft, subtle movements, soft, subtle engagements, which also help right with the calming effect of the practice which is in essence what we are trying to do today. And then go ahead and still out that left knee, bring both knees back in towards the chest. Don't use the hands, contract the core a little bit. Good. And then go ahead and place the feet right back down to the ground. Excellent. Okay, now I'd like you to bring your hands down by your sides. Palms are gonna be up. The thumbs are gonna be pointed away here. And I'd like you to press into your feet. Just stretch out the abdomen, the diaphragm, lift up here. It doesn't have to be very high, just enough to feel a slight lifting. And then I'd like you to come again to the top of the inhale. Feel the diaphragm contract at the bottom of the abdomen here. Hold it. Exhale. Again, inhale. Feel the diaphragm contract, the abdomen contract. Hold. Exhale, and one more, press the shoulders down, inhale. And exhale, and lower down to the floor. Good, I'd like you to bring both knees again to the chest, bring your hands to your shins, and then begin to rock slowly up and down, really slow. But I'd like you to do it now to contain the movement, meaning slowing down the movement. And then once you feel, okay, I've got this, I'd like you to release the shins and make the palms just face the outer knees. And then I'd like you to roll all the way to the top of the mat, hover, lengthen into boat pose. Yeah. And then go all the way back. Maybe pause at the back position, feel your core, and then come all the way up. Yeah, we're gonna do that six times. Good, inhale is the rock back. Pause, exhale as the rock forward to pause and keep going. Keeping the abdomen nice and contained. Okay, this last one, I'd like you to go up and maybe straighten the legs or stay with the knees bent if your back is feeling a little tender here. Good, and then here, I want you to grab onto your toes, bend the knees a little bit, and I want you to push the toes into the fingers. This is gonna help you later on in the practice. 
So you're pushing the toes into the fingers so the toes are slightly pointed away from the body. Good, and then look at your knees, make sure they're pointed directly at your chest. Good, good. And then I'd like you to come right down with the knees, feet meet together and sit up nice and tall. Okay, now I'd like you to close your eyes and I'd like you to bring the elbows in towards the ribs, palms are up to the sky. Sit up nice and tall, let the inner thighs stretch, let the outer hips rotate externally. And then I'd like you to come into your own practice here of breath. So the inhale, pausing at the top of the inhale is gonna energize you. So you've tuned in, you know what you need. If you feel like you need to settle down more to make this practice work for you at its best, I need you to pause at the end of the exhale instead. So pick where you'd like to go and I'd go, like you to go for three rounds. And then after your three rounds, go ahead and bring your legs into a cross position, hands under the shoulders, and let your legs go back into tabletop, just for a moment. Then I'd like you to bring your knees pretty darn wide and bring your feet together here. Good, and then I'd like you to bring your left hand, we're gonna go left just because it's easier for y'all to see me with the camera there. Bring your left hand to your lower back. And then I'd like you to bring your hips down towards your heels the best that you can so that you can really focus on the upper back here. Whenever you've got your hips slightly back, it eliminates your lower back from overworking. Okay, from this position, I'd like you to inhale, lift up through the left shoulder, rotate to the ceiling, and then bring it right back down. Good, so you got the idea. Now bring the weight forward, bring the hip right shoulder over the right hand, hips just slightly back this time, and then lift up a little bit more, and then come back down. And now let's do it with the breath. So we're gonna inhale really slow, open it up. And then exhale really slow, bring it down. Good, last one, inhale really slow. Keep the hips moving towards the right so that you don't twist at the lower body and exhale, bring it down. Let the left hand come down, bring your hips down to your heels, bring the right hand to your lower back. We're gonna repeat that. We're gonna start on this side kind of low. So first inhale, rotate to the right. Just feel the upper back and the neck starting to release. And then close right back down towards the mat. Lift up a little bit higher. Get your left hand under your left shoulder. Then slightly go back this time. Inhale, open it up here. Really get that right shoulder to externally rotate. And then exhale, bring it back down. Just finding yourself gliding here through the tissues of the back of the body. And then back down. Let's go one more round here. Inhale, lift it all the way up. Good. And then exhale, bring it all the way down. Right hand to the floor, bring your knees and feet back to hip distance apart, tuck your toes in, press into the hands and slowly begin to extend the legs straight back into downward dog. And then I'd like you to just let your neck relax. So we don't want our head too far behind our arms. We don't want them forward of our arms. We want them in this really nice strong line of our upper neck, right? Our head, really as our lower neck and our head. And then go ahead and walk out your heels here. So bend one knee and then the other. Just really find a nice, smooth way to feel the back of the legs, the back of the calves. Maybe check out your toes. How much are you able to flex them at the bend? Can you get all five toes to bend? And then check out the other foot. Can you get all five toes to bend, which is extremely beneficial for balance? Good. Last time. And then find yourself in downward dog. Take a deep inhale, feel the belly. And then exhale, contracting. And then I'd like you to step the right foot in between your hands. Lower the left knee down. Good. Okay, from this position now, I'd like you to bring the hands up towards the right leg. And we're gonna go with something a little different here today. Your back toes can be tucked or untucked. You can pick for this one. But I want you to allow your front knee to go way ahead of your right ankle because I want you to see how much flexion you have here, how much range of motion you have. So just kind of lean into it. Let your hips get real heavy here. And then back up and come right on out of it. So we're going to keep doing that. So now one more time, going forward. Good. Let it come here right into that ankle. You'll be surprised how many people can't go much further without having to lift up their heel. And then go back. Now from here, I'd like you to bring your left hand 
under the left shoulder or slightly more wider than your yoga mat. And then bring the right arm up towards the sky. But then I want you to open up the right shoulder by bending the right elbow into a cactus and then twisting your sternum, which is the top of your chest towards the ceiling, the best that you can. Keep the right foot flat. Now pull it down. Good. And then I'd like you to reach forward with that right hand ahead of the right knee. And then exhale, pull it back again. And I just want you to feel this gliding effect now behind the shoulder. Inhale. And then exhale, bring it back. Your navel is strong. We warmed up at the very beginning so that we knew to keep that engaged. Now, the next time that you go back with that cactus arm, right, I want you to push down through the left knee, push down through the right foot. Stay here. Keep turning your sternum up to the ceiling. Then tuck the left toes up or in. Lift the left knee up. Good. And we're going to check out this right hip. Make sure the right hip is even with the right knee. And I don't want you to drop completely here. You can actually lift up slightly higher than the knee. And then let's go forward again. Right hand reaches forward. And then exhale, it comes back. Good. Four more. Inhale. And exhale. Be very precise with your movements. The right leg should start to feel something here. The back of the right shoulder should start to feel something. One more. Good. And then bring that right hand down outside the right foot and then step the right leg back into a plank position. Pause in your plank position. Get your shoulders back and behind the ears. Press your heels back. Pull your navel in. And then on your next exhale, completely lower flat down to the mat. Good. Untuck your toes. Press down through your lower body to lift up the upper body for your first cobra. Good. And then inhale and exhale here. Keep working. Press down through the lower body to lift up the upper body. And then roll over the toes or lift up your downward dog to tabletop. Good. And then kind of feel what has changed? How does the right leg feel versus the left leg? How does the right shoulder feel versus the left shoulder? And then we're going to repeat this all on the other side. So with the next inhale, the gaze is forward, the left foot plants down, the right knee lowers. Good. Okay, we're gonna bring the hands up now to the hips or above the left leg, and then really lean into it. If you need your hands on the floor, you can stay with your hands on the floor. But I want you to see, does your left knee goes far forward maybe as the right knee did? Good, so we're getting a nice big movement here through that left ankle. Good. So we're just flossing as much as we can. Okay, then go ahead and come back. Now we're gonna bring the right hand under the right shoulder or slightly wider, that's up to you for today. And then bring the left arm up for that twist. Squeeze the left knee in slightly, and then open up that left elbow like a cactus or a goal pose, right? To externally rotate that shoulder. Turn that sternum, really twist here, create space. Good, now we're gonna reach forward with that left arm. Inhale, reach it forward. And then exhale, come back. And just move with the sound of your breath here. Make it all connect. Making it very harmonious here, right? With the Ujjayi breath and the movement. Maybe it doesn't even stop. It's just this constant flow. Good. And then go ahead and lift that right knee up here. And keep going. Five more. Inhale, reach forward. Keep that knee squeezing in. Don't drop into that left hip. Keep the right heel active. Keep the right inner thigh lifting up. Right inner thigh lifting up. And then one more. Good. And then bring that left hand all the way forward. Step that left leg back into a plank position. Spread your hands out. Reach with your heels back. Pull in through the navel. Good. And then exhale, lower down, chaturanga, knees, chest, chin, whatever feels comfortable. Press down through the lower body to lift up the upper body, cobra. Make your heels reach towards one another. Good. And then we're going to go ahead, roll to tabletop to downward dog. Good. With the next inhalation, you're going to look forward. Step the right foot in between your hands. Now, this is where you're going to grab your block or your shoe box or your cereal box. Okay, so I'd like you to take the block between your fingertips behind you. So I'm going to hold it um, 
on the wider setting. You can hold it on the thinner setting. It's up to you, whatever you're more comfortable with. And then I want you to rotate the shoulders back, right? And then I want you to press down through your left toes. I want you to pull up through your pelvic, engage your core, bend your elbows a little bit, lift your sternum and fingertips into the block and then just stay here, lifting your sternum. And you're gonna feel something in your left hip flexor as you do so, but keep squeezing. And I'd like you to go into pranayama here. So inhale through the nose, exhale through the nose. Keep squeezing, inhale through the nose, exhale through the nose. Two more. Push through the fingertips. Okay, don't move the arms at all. Now just press down through the right foot to lift up the left knee. Yep, slight bend to the left knee, and then let's go for more pranayama, inhale. Keep lifting to the sternum, exhale. Keep pulling up that pelvic floor, inhale. Exhale. Keep squeezing, inhale. Good, and exhale. Okay, we're gonna place that block down to the side. Bring the hands all the way down, lower the left heel down. Yeah, now we're gonna come up into warrior one. So bring the arms, if you want, on your hips, it can be at your heart. I'm gonna go up right here, kind of diagonal on my shoulders, and just come into your warrior one, and then come back to that pranayama of inhale, and exhale. Pressing down through the right foot, lifting through the left inner edge of your thigh, pressing through the left pinky of the foot, pelvic floor lifted, sternum lifted. Good. Okay, now everyone bring your hands to the heart center, straighten the right leg, flex the right foot or turn the right toes slightly to the angle of the left mat, and then we're gonna come low into the left thigh. So kind of into this lunge. And then I'd like you to bring your hands to the floor and walk them forward like you're doing a downward dog, but leave the legs as they are. Push into the floor, put your head between your arms, hug the arms down, and just feel the stretch through the back. Arms and torso and downward dog, legs in this lunge or sandasana like position. Good, and then I'd like you to walk your hands back towards the feet. Bring your hands towards your hips. Lift your hips up, straighten the left leg out. Good. Bring your hands behind your thighs, both toes now pointing forward. I'd like you to inhale, lift your sternum. Glide your hands down the back of your thighs. Exhale and fold. Good. And then we're going to inhale, lift up through the thighs, hands on the body. And exhale, come down. Just keep gliding down your legs. One more time, inhale, lift up. Good, and then exhale, come all the way down. Good, bring your hands to the mat between your feet, and then walk the hands back to the very front of your mat. Lower the left knee down, send the right knee back, and we're gonna lower to the right hip right here. Lower to the right hip, stack your knees up. So why don't you imagine you're doing like a side plank position here? And I got this one from Tiffany Kirschnack. Um, I really like it. I think it's a lot for the side obliques and um, also toning for the back. So your right hand is gonna go slightly forward of your right shoulder. You're gonna position yourself on the outer edge of the right knee and lift up your hips. The left arm is gonna go up. So you're in this side plank position, right? Good, so this is gonna be your inhale. Your exhale, bring your left, keep the legs as they are, bring your left hand under the left shoulder, Right hand is under the right shoulder, chaturanga. And then the inhale, you lift all the way up with the left arm. Good, we're gonna do five of these. Exhale, lower it down. Stay on the outer edge of the right knee. Lift, work those obliques. Your hips, your arms, your chest. Stay with the movement of your breath. Good. Okay, and then come right up into regular plank. Lift up through the knees. Good, heels go back, navel comes in, press into the floor, lengthen. Good, then bend the knees, send the hips all the way back. Straighten the legs into your downward dog. Regather information from your body. 
it's, it's a slow movement, right? But it, it exerts, it requires energy, it requires fuel, it requires concentration, it requires your breath. It requires the body to move in ways that you don't normally move, which is so beneficial for everything that you do. Okay, from here, we're gonna look forward. Inhale, left leg comes all the way to the front. Right knee comes down, grab your block. Or she walks. Okay, bring it. Good thing I have a wall. Behind you, fingertip position. Elbows are bent here, right? Run our shoulders all the way back, away from the spine or from the low belly. Low belly, low back, good. Okay, so press down through the left foot. Press down through the right toes or right knee. Lift up through the pelvic floor. Engage the core, the ribs together, sternum is high, and squeeze. Inhale. Keep lifting that block. Exhale. Four more, just like that. Inhale. Close your eyes. Exhale. Find all the subtle sensations. When you close your eyes, you allow the body to go deeper. You go more in. You work a little harder for yourself. Right knee up. Keep going. Find steadiness. Right knee up, but slightly bent. Hips are forward. Push fingertips into the block. Sternum high. It's a bent to be fatiguing. Resetting your shoulders from all that forward position. Lots of muscles being built here. Lots of upper neck muscles being built. built. Good. And then right knee comes down. Block to the side. Hands to the floor, right heel comes down so that right knee came right back up. And we're gonna press down through the left foot to lift the chest up, warrior one. Again, the hands can be to the hips, the hands can be at the heart or high. Keep breathing, keep settling the nervous system, keep building that myelin, right? That protects the nerves. Healthy body, healthy mind. Lifting through the right inner thigh. And then everyone hands to the heart. Okay, we're gonna bend into the back leg, right? And the left toes are pointed to the left front corner of the mat. Hands to the floor, keep the legs as they are. I'm gonna kind of flip this way so I don't have my backside to you. And find yourself in downward dog here, right? So your arm positions in downward dog, your torso is in downward dog, but your legs are in this wide skandasana position here. And breathing, let your neck just go. Good. Okay, we're gonna lift up through the head slowly, walk the hands towards the body. Straighten the right leg, flip all toes to the same side or direction. Bring hands to the hips, press down through the feet. Inhale, come all the way up to standing. Good. This time the hands are gonna to go to the low back. Lace your hands, shoulders are back and down. Navel is in, sternum is high. Soft knees, exhale and fold, nice and slow. Shoulders are back. Good, hands to the hips, inhale, nice and slow, all the way up. Two more rounds, just like this, hands lace, exhale, nice and slow, all the way down. Hands to the waist, inhale, all the way up. Good, last one, exhale, nice and slow, coming down. Inhale, hands to the waist, and rise all the way high. Good, this time I'd like you to flip the feet back to the front, hands to the floor. Knee, back knee to the floor, step back with that front knee, tabletop. We're gonna go down to the left hip now. So left hip down, shrink back. Left hand slightly forward of the left shoulder. Find yourself in this kind of long position here to lift all the way up into that side plank position. So the right knee is right above the left knee. The right foot is on top of it. You're on the outer edge of the left foot. Here we go. This is your inhale. Good. And then exhale. You rotate each other on We got five of these. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, bring it down. 
Keep flowing with your breath. You can be a little faster, a little slower than me. I may have an extra one in here, that's all right. Good. Okay, then we're gonna come up regular plank here. So regular plank, hands under shoulders, four fingers forward, thumbs at each other, heels go back, round through the belly, head is forward, inhale. Chaturanga all the way down, exhale. Good, I want you to come into cobra, press down to the lower lungs, lift up. And this time go to tabletop, exhale. Good, come up to standing on the knees on this side. And then this time, you can go with a block if you'd like, or nothing at all. Okay, so again, now I'd like you to press your knees down, send your bones of your hips forward over your knees, Get your shoulders right in line with your hips. Bring the block or box right behind you. And we're gonna engage the front of the quads here. So go out, let's tuck our toes in the back actually on this one. Okay, so we're gonna go here as our inhale. Just hold the block back there. And then exhale to slightly lean back to engage all the front of the body. Not, not um, the strasana yet. Inhale, come up. We're gonna do five of these. Exhale, come down. Just build a little heat. Inhale, come up. Now let's go ahead and maybe come to fingertips. And exhale, come down. Good, fingertips holding the box, just like before, elbows squeeze in. Good. And if you've got that block, I want you to transfer it between the thighs. If you've got a box, it might break. <laughs> Keep squeezing the block, knees, hips, shoulder alignment. This time I want you to flip the palms away from you. So they're open behind you, thumbs are pointing backwards. Okay, here we go. Press knees down, hips forward, shoulders forward, chin in, and then exhale, find the insides of your, your heels here and push them wide. Stay here, Nusrasana or camel pose, inner heels, push it away with the fingers. Lift the sternum, two more breaths of pranayama. And then the inhale, you rise. Good, exhale, come to seated on the heels and move the block out of the way. Okay, notice, reset. So it kind of gets your heart going a little bit. Okay, so now we're gonna bring our elbows to the floor. And just let that lower back kind of settle. I'm just moving my hips a little bit left and right to make space again in my sacrum. And then I'm gonna lace my hands together here. So. Um, like a little basket, okay? And then walk your knees back tabletop-ish. And then you want your elbows a little bit closer than you think that they should be. Shoulders are over the elbows. And then I'd like you to lift all the way up into your dolphin. So the knees come up, the head is just hanging, and you're pressing into the floor with the forearms, with the elbows. Link lots of space, so get those shoulders away from the ears. Walk those feet nice and close. Lift those sit bones nice and high. And make that breath nice and audible. I'm gonna stay here for about 30 seconds. We're almost halfway done. Keep pressing, creating space in the shoulders, broadening through the back. 10 more seconds. Relax the eyes. Keep pressing, work through it. Let the neck relax, keep making space. Good, lift the right leg up, keep its hip square, so not all the way up, we want our right hip square with our left hip, hold. Keep pressing, keep strengthening. Good, right leg down, left leg up, keep going. Good job, keep your hips square, keep the navel in, feel the diaphragm. Almost there. Left leg down. Push down. One more breath. And then knees come down. Child's pose. Arms behind you. Palms are up. Shoulders are relaxed. Let the upper back soften. Let the upper body melt onto the legs.
Good. Okay, and then I'd like you to bring your hands under the shoulders and lift up to tabletop. Cross your ankles and bring yourself onto your butts. Okay, we're gonna send the legs out in front of us. Yeah, we're gonna send the legs out in front of us and come down to your backs. We're not gonna stay here, but come down to your back. Okay, let's bring our knees into our chest. And then I'd like you to open the arms up into a gold post again, or cactus arms. And then bring the shins up even with the knees. And again, contract the core. Okay, so I'd like you to press down through the arms, try not to let the shoulders come up. If they do come up, so be it. Okay, but I want you to go all the way towards the right side, but don't let the legs fall. And then inhale very slowly to bring the knees back up to center. And then exhale, let the knees go to the left. Keep the legs together. And then inhale right back through center. So move slower before each side. Exhale. You don't have to turn your head, right? You can keep your head straight up. It's more about slow, controlled, precise movement. I'm actually probably going too fast. So feel your body just moving through space. You only can feel that if you slow down enough to get and register the feedback. So allow the body to have enough time to process what's happening. To really pull in the muscles of the belly one more time each side. Really focus on all of the action, everything that's required to control this slowly. Good. And then go ahead and bring the knees into the chest. We're gonna roll back and then come up into that boat like we did at the very beginning of class and hold here. Knees are together, thighs are together, toes are pointed slightly forward, but not much. And then cross the ankles and send the legs back down the dog. Okay. So this is gonna be our very last standing pose. So give it what you've got. So we're gonna ask the hands now to really feel the floor, to press our hands flat into the ground, to feel that connection, that balance, register what that feels like to be steady here, to feel strength here, to live through the muscles in the legs. Good. All of this to make a connection of balance. Okay, now go ahead and look forward, step the right leg to the front of your mat. Step the left leg to the front of the mat. Inhale is your length of halfway up, right? Exhale as you bend and fold forward. Inhale, slowly come all the way up to standing. And then the hands can rest at the heart or down by your sides. And then take a full breath here, shoulders back. Good. Okay, now I'd like to get nice and strong. I'm gonna back up a little bit. Get nice and strong through the right leg. And again, ground down through the left leg. Get nice and strong through the left leg. Okay, we're gonna lift the right knee up. And then I'd like you to take your right hand, grab your right big toe and extend the right leg out. And then lengthen, lengthen, lengthen here. But instead of pulling the toes towards you, I want you to push the toes forward. Toes go forward, not extreme, but just like you did at the beginning of class. And then lengthen, good. Okay, now I want you to bend the elbow down towards the right knee and then just fold down a little bit, right? If you've got this and you want to bring your forehead down to the shin, you're more than welcome to. But by keeping that elbow down, we're keeping that right shoulder back externally rotated. Good. And then inhale, come up. Now extend that right leg out to the side and lengthen through the left here, right? So you're lifting, lifting, lifting. The right inner side is externally rotating. Externally rotating. It's very challenging to do this while speaking. I can tell you that right now. <laughs> and then pranayama. And then we're going to bring that right leg forward. Then gently place down. Okay, other side. Get strong through the right leg. So now we know what's coming. Left knee up. The toes point as you lift. Grab the big toe. Right leg is long. Push away, folding down, lifting up, externally rotating left, 
Right leg long, right side long, ribs open forward. Totally cheating here. I have a wall. Why not? I can talk and do it at the same time. And left leg forward. Left knee bends. Slowly bring it down. Good job. Okay, inhale, lift up. And exhale, bring back down. Palms are flat, knees are easy. Inhale, halfway lift forward. Good. Exhale, all the way down. Okay, I'd like you to step on your hands, right on your palms, bend your knees. So right on your palms, bend your knees. It's almost like this funky standing pose that we did in boat, right? And then look forward to the top of your mat and then there's that boat position. Good. And then come off of the tops of your feet or the tops of your hands, I should say. And then bend the knees and come all the way down to your butts. Okay, and then grab your block. So I'd like you to place the block, um, not flat, but long ways. So you're going to be um, head on that block. If you don't have the block, you just do what you can here, okay? So otherwise you're just resting the head so that the block touches the neck only about an inch down. All right, and then have your knees bent here. Arms are to the side. And I want your whole body to melt over the block like your body is the butter and the block is the bread. Your body is the butter and the block is the bread and you're just, <sighs> good. Okay, now I'd like you to turn your head as far to the right as you can. As far to the right as you can. Good. And then kind of have the nose pointed to the right here. And then come back only halfway. Again, melt. You've got to surrender. If you don't melt, right? If you don't surrender, then you won't feel this in the release of the neck, those tight, ropey muscles. And then make teeny tiny circles with your nose. Really get into that. So that corner now of my block is getting right into that really tight, tender place in my neck. Tiny little circles. And then find a place to rest. And then practice your inhale here. We're gonna go pause with the exhale. And then inhale again. Exhale, pause at the end of the exhale. Inhale again. Exhale, pausing. And then inhaling, shifting back to center. Turn your head back up to the center of the block, facing the head, the nose straight up at the ceiling. Now we're gonna turn our heads all the way to the left. Again, relax, let your shoulders be heavy. Have them externally rotate away from the body. And then bring your nose up halfway. Let that left corner of the block settle right into that pressure point in the neck, the head, make tiny little circles with the nose. So the first time I tried this, I didn't know if I was doing it right, but the next day your body will tell you you were. So relax as much as you can here. And then find a place to rest. Inhale. Fully exhale and pause at the end. Inhale. Exhale. Pause at the end. Last one. And then inhale, send your head back through center. Go ahead and lift the head off the block, move the block out of the way for a moment. Okay, and then I'd like you to again reestablish somewhere really comfortable to rest the body. Let the hands just rest outside of you. And then this time I'd like you to bring the bottoms of the feet together, let the knees go wide, Supta Baddha Konasana. 
Let the bottoms of the feet make a connection to get that feedback of softness, of surrender. And just feel as every single part of your body just lets go. Allowing the breath now to encourage the skin, the fascia beneath the skin, the gliding muscle or tissues around the muscles to rest. So all of those gliding tissues, like the one that we just did right behind the neck there, right? What we did there is rehydrate them, bring them more movement, suppleness, instead of just tight, 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 go, go, go. We allow them to release. All of these pockets in our body that generally are just full to the max at the end of every day. You're giving them all permission to unwind. Now I'd like you to bring your hands back to your diaphragm right below your ribs. That sheet between the ribs and the lower core, lower abdominal. And again, with your eyes closed, you can be really relaxed. And as you inhale, imagine and envision that diaphragm muscle contracting, moving down. And as you exhale, it lifts up and softens. You can stay here in this position for Shavasana for as long as you have today. And enjoy. Namaste.